Mikel Marino. The midfielder had an incredible 23-24 season for both club and country. One of his biggest highlights of the season was his thumping header in the 119th minute against Germany in the quarterfinals of the Euros, which sent Spain to the semi-finals. He became the second Marino to score in the Stuttgart Stadium after his dad Miguel Marino did so in November 1991, where you might remember he recreated his father's celebration. Marino may have shot into the spotlight through his reliable displays in the Euro 2024 tournament, but for those who are familiar with his game, his performance at the competition wasn't surprising. It was expected, considering that the midfielder had once been described as the second coming of Xabi Alonso, when Rafa Benitez stated, when at Liverpool, that he saw similarities between Marino and Alonso. They're similar in the position they're in and the way they read the game, he said. Alonso's long passing was better, but Marino is more mobile and more dynamic. Some weeks ago, Marino picked up a shoulder injury in his very first training session for the Gunners, but is now available for selection again. So, is Arsenal's new signing really the new Xabi Alonso? The six foot two midfielder is known for his hard work in the center of the pitch. Will Marino be the final piece of the puzzle that will make Arsenal finally win the Premier League after getting so close for two seasons in a row? Or will he unbalance the squad that needs reinforcement in other positions, especially the centre-forward position? There have been calls from fans that Arsenal should sign a striker after centre-forward Gabriel Jesus has failed to be clinical and available due to his frequent injury problems. Arsenal have had to turn to Kai Havertz to score their goals, but this was an easy decision to make because he wasn't performing spectacularly from his time at Chelsea. But Havertz managed to score 13 goals in 37 Premier League appearances, which is OK. But do you think it's good enough? Maybe Havertz would have scored more if he wasn't playing both midfield and striking positions. His output was still better than Jesus, who was primarily the striker, but only managed four goals in 27 appearances. Havertz has opened his goal-scoring account for the 24-25 season, and it's just early stages. The output both he and Jesus produced in terms of goals aren't that inspiring to fans, so many believed Arsenal would definitely sign a striker. But surprisingly, they've done the reverse. They sold their backup striker, Eddie Nketiah, and their coach, Arteta, insisted instead on signing Marino. The question is... Why? Why did Arteta prefer another midfielder instead of a striker? As we all saw in the summer, Mikel is also a winner, with his strong performances throughout the Euros helping Spain win the tournament, Arteta said, when Arsenal completed the transfer of the midfielder for the sum of an initial 32 million euros plus 5 million in add-ons. Despite mostly coming on as a substitute, Marino was integral to Spain's run to the Euro 2024 title. Spanish fans won't forget his dramatic 119th minute goal against Germany in the quarters. However, the Euros isn't even the best of the midfielder. It is the result of Marino's growth and development over the years. For Marino, it all started in Pamplona, Navarre, where he was born to footballer and Osasuna icon Miguel Marino. Marino began his journey to professional football with Amigo before eventually moving to Osasuna. After gaining match experience with Osasuna Reserves, who played in what is currently now the fifth division of the Spanish league, Marino was promoted to the main squad on the 31st of January 2015. He quickly cemented his position in that main squad and was important to them avoiding relegation that season. His performances earned him a call-up to the Spain under-19s. He scored Spain's first goal of the tournament and was an important part of the team as they went on to win the competition. In the 2015-16 season, the midfielder continued his development and helped Osasuna reach the playoffs for promotion, scoring important goals for them in the first round of the playoffs. With his performances for Osasuna, Borussia Dortmund signed him during the January transfer window of the 2015-16 season on a five-year deal. While he won the DFB Pokal with them, Marino was a squad player at Dortmund and would only make his league appearance 
on 14th of October 2016 in the 2016-17 season. Marino wasn't content with the minutes he got at Dortmund, and then in 2017 an opportunity arose. Rafael Benitez, the then Newcastle United coach, who had just returned Newcastle United to top flight football after failing to keep them from relegation when he was hired in the 2016-2017 season, was interested in Marino. Benitez had been monitoring Marino's growth since he'd played for Spain's under-21 team. Newcastle then offered to sign Marino on loan and agreed to a clause obligating them to sign the player permanently based on a number of appearances. Marino eager to prove himself, joined Newcastle in July 2017. Marino had a solid start at Newcastle, especially on the defensive side. In his second start for Newcastle against West Ham, Marino had already stamped himself as a no-nonsense midfielder. He put up a man-of-the-match performance with his assured all-round midfield display. His performance helped Newcastle win the game 3-0, and also earned him a comparison with the man who took Bayer Leverkusen to the invincible Bundesliga win, Xabi Alonso. As Benitez himself said, what Marino lacked in passing range at the time, he made up for in his mobility and dynamism. So, is his passing range now better? We'll get to that soon. Marino's mobility and dynamism didn't translate to goals and assists at that time. He only scored one goal and made an assist in his 25 appearances across all competitions for Newcastle, who did eventually sign him on a permanent five-year contract. Now, while he didn't score or assist much, Marino was a dual monster. Despite only having 24 appearances, he was top 10 in defensive stats and first when it came to duels in that 2017-2018 season. What he achieved despite not playing all through the season was pretty breathtaking. He was the fourth best midfielder when it came to tackles, as he won 2.68 per game, fifth on the rankings when it came to possession one, eighth when it came to aerial duels and interceptions. His first season was great from a defensive point of view, but by July 2018, Marino returned to Spain and signed for Real Sociedad in the 2018-19 season. It was there that he blossomed to become the man that Arsenal have splashed out over 30 million euros on. Marino actually had trouble adapting to Real Sociedad, but when he did, he became a regular starter and even began to score goals again, just like he had done when he was at Osasuna. His performances earned him his first senior call-up in 2020, and by the 22-23 season, Marino had fully matured as a player. In that season, Marino led in both attacking and defensive contributions. He played as a central midfielder that season and scored two goals and provided nine assists in 33 La Liga appearances. He ranked in the top 82.6 percentile for shots and entries into the opposition's penalty area per game. His presence in the Real Sociedad midfield made them all the more difficult to break down. He won 63.6% .6 of his tackles, according to FootMob, and had 218 recoveries. He also won 54.6% of his duels and 65.7% of his aerial duels. What an enforcer! He even made 20 interceptions. Arsenal have signed themselves a defensive juggernaut who can also provide goals and assists. They have now gotten themselves another Declan Rice, but this time only cheaper. So, how does Marino compare to Rice? Well, after that stellar 22-23 season, Marino got even better in the 23-24 season and no Arsenal midfielder came close to him in the defensive phase of the central midfield role. Marino played 2,485 minutes last season. He won more duels per 90 than Rice. The Euro 2024 winner won 11.8 duels per 90, with Rice winning only 4.3, despite playing 3,230 minutes. Marino won the most aerial duels in Europe's top five leagues in 23-24, with 168 duels at 6.1 per 90, but Rice is nowhere near Marino in this regard, as he won 1.1 aerial duels per 90. The player has won more tackles and possession too than Rice. Added to that, he can also score goals just like Rice. However, Marino does have to work on his passing accuracy. 
he isn't currently better than any of Arsenal's midfielders in this regard. He has only 77.3% passing accuracy, far lower than Rice at around 90.7% pass accuracy. Although the way Arteta might use Marino could hide that flaw in Marino's game. How do you think Arteta will use him? Standing at six foot two, Marino, as Benitez described him as, is a mobile and dynamic midfielder. He is a genius at the combative aspect of midfield, an area which Arsenal need to build upon since the departure of Granit Xhaka. Marino will add additional aerial threat to Arsenal and will help them win possession back with his abilities to duel. Over the years, he's added goal scoring by powerful headers or arriving at the box late. He's also become an avenue for creativity as he's capable of producing assists. Arteta may want to form a midfield three of Rice, Marino and Erdegaard. Marino will be the solution to the problem Arsenal are having with Rice when it comes to build-up since he can receive the ball during the build-up phase. Rice is better when it comes to playing box-to-box -box, and Marino could be the midfielder that sits while Rice is slightly more advanced where he's more dangerous. That way, Arsenal have another player coming forward who can score goals and they would need that considering both Havertz and Jesus haven't inspired much confidence in front of goal. Also, Marino could fill in for Rice too, should the Englishman not be available. The two of them occupy similar areas on the pitch, so they can be used for like for like too. With this, could it be that Marino is the final piece for Arsenal? They've gotten close to winning a few trophies, but have found themselves overrun when it matters. Marino, apart from his on-the-ball and off-the-ball capabilities, could also add leadership qualities to the team. Will his signing be enough for Arsenal to conquer Manchester City? Or will City go for a record fifth title in a row?